Well, after Peshawar. Peshawar? Mm hmm. Peshawar. Uh, Rawal Pindi. It's got more rail tracks than the British Rail, the biggest railroad system in the world. And then my skinny, skinny Mahatma Gandhi talks them out of the whole country. Give it back to us, huh? We ain't buying your goddamn British salt and paying taxes and we're making our own clothes. It's called Cotty. Get used to it. Cut out of here. Uh, Pindi, Rawal Pindi. And after that, they come down. We're talking two, two, two Bedford trucks with a dusty Mercedes, lazily uh, keeping an eye on it. All right, all right. Jellum River, see right there? Jellum River, remember? <sighs> do we need to do an Alzheimer's test here? King Porus, War Elephants, Alexander. Elephants clogging up the river after he finished those pachyderms. Had them packing down and uh, get their water, snow all done. Well, I mean, we just went over that two hours ago. Look it, um, you got a pulse? Uh, you know, I think you better take out, yeah, pre-arrange and prepay for your cremation services now because, uh, that's it for you. Well, you know what? This is for fun, okay? Forget about the damn Jellum River. You don't re have to remember anything. Well, it's in the rear view mirror anyway. Yeah, forget about that damn river. We're out of there because we're already going straight into Jabakabad. Jacobabad. Ah. Hottest place in the world. We're talking like 42, 43 degrees centigrade. 117 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's called the Sind. You get through the sin, huh? And, huh? Oh. <sighs> they make it to Karachi, yeah. Karachi? 12 million people? Sprawling hellhole for millions of people. A curse to be born around here? Ah. Oh, well, look at that sparkling private yacht <laughs> in the sparkling Arabian Sea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Karachi Bay. Uh. Um, oh, it belongs to Sphinx. It's his private shaman yacht called the White Crystal. What's his captain's name? Bluebeard? Oh, you'll hear all about all of these guys coming up in their whole trip later. Um, well, you know, let's go. Uh, you know, my audience is half breed. Some use feet. Some use kilometers. Some use a rusty abacus. Some use a French dictionary. Um, I was looking good, huh? Before. Uh, sparkling. The diamond patterns is what really, really turns turns on everybody. So, the Afraid Tribesmen, yeah. Big men. Patons. Two meters tall. They load. <laughs> We're talking about 400 kilos. Out of the truck, onto the boat. Well, they got to roll it over in a dinghy. And, um, yeah, so Sphinx pays them off. He gives them a whole bunch of money. We're talking American dollars, not these crumpled up teeny little Afghani rupees. I don't know. Well, 
What's happening back at the old sycamore tree with Queen Latif and her three year carny tribes people? Well, uh, she got paid by Sphinx. $2,800. And that's just for the delivery. Oh, yeah. Four people. Queen Latif splits it four ways. $700 each in crumpled up Afghani rupees. The king on them put a, put a, a warrior, woman warrior on there. Okay. Crumpled up, yeah. Well, it's a big wad, though, because it's not worth that much uh, <clears throat> compared to a $100 American bill. Huh? Uh, and how did the king, back in the Victorian summer palace, get paid for, the, I mean, the big payment, okay? Uh, <clears throat> you'll never know. We're talking to professional smugglers here. Well, so, um, yeah, I mean, the three muleteer bodyguards from the Yarkoon, <laughs> they're free to go. You know, you give your mules away now. They're headed for yeah, downtown Jalalabad. They want some kebabs like they never add up in Chitral. And they're off to Kabul. We're talking big lights of Kabul. They got an underground bazaar there for frontiersmen called the uh, Alleyway of the Slut Belly Dancers. They've deserved it, huh? <laughs> they protected their queen. <sighs> Queen Latifa relieved because she's alone. Well, she hasn't been alone for two years and she just wants to reflect about the next chapter in her life. Like a book. I guess it's chapter four. Two more to go. Each chapter. Maybe a different silk jacket. <laughs> uh, and a twist in the plot. Let's get twisted. The queen, huh? Reflective. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, a cloudy day. Oh. Storm clouds. Oi. Where's that freak? Shaft of sunlight come from. Ow! Uh, barefoot. Yeah, and she's got three bandoliers of heavy. Because <coughs> they're copper cased. Lee Enfield rifle bullets. Three bandoliers around her neck. Weighty. And awkward because she's got her arm in a sling turban. Yeah, well. She, she rests against a boulder along the Konar River, and uh, absent-mindedly she pulls the drawstring on her uh, little little goat leather pouch to get out her connoisseur stash. Oh yeah, this is the good stuff. Okay, connoisseur, absolutely the world's best stash. Of apricots. Yeah. Um, dried chitrali apricots. We need to talk about apricots, you know. In Chitral, every private home, fruit orchard. Hey. Oh, peaches. Ah, groves of peach trees. Oh, <laughs> cherries. Mmm. <laughs> Chitrali cherry pies. Yeah, to die for those, huh? Loquats. Uh, plums. 
plum, plum trees. And, yeah, apricots. Uh, especially apricots. Well, yeah, there are washing plums, little quats, cherries, peaches, <laughs> plums, and apricots. And, but where do they sell it? I mean, we've been, you're, you're an expert now at the, uh, the Lawari Pass. You know so much about it. You could be a Pakistani flatlander spy. You know too much. Be careful. Watch your back, huh? You get some Yarkunis around, armed. <laughs> to the jeez, <coughs> ooh, yeah. Well, you you can only get over there. I mean, it's obliterated with snow, except for like a month in the summer. You can't even see the road. You can barely find the mountain on either side of it. It's obliterated. And even if you wanted to pay some cargo jeep to take your goddamn cherries to the market in Peshawar, you would lose money. <laughs> Trying to sell your stuff, flog it off in the markets of Peshawar. It's the only, okay, you hit, need to hit a Silk Road town to stay in business. Well, this is a mixed blessing. <laughs> Having that much fruit, huh? Well, that's why those Huns of people, they live to be over 100 years old. The whole tribes of them centenarians. We're talking centenarians gone wild. Yeah, then when they have a an orgy, huh? They'll check your ID at the door to make sure no whippersnappers sneak in on the side. No 80-year-olds, no 90-year-olds, huh? You ever been fucked by a person over 100? <laughs> He'll never forget that. Yeah.